The big three of Toonami. We know the big three Ooh. of anime. What's the big three of Toonami? Dragon Ball Z, Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, and... What is going on, people? Back with another episode. It's Wednesday, 3 o'clock Eastern Time, so you know what that means. The Undergated Network is presenting the Undergated Podcast every Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Man, another week in the books, another weekend down. I have the homie Austin Gumpla Tesseract. We're going to two-man this thing tonight. We're going to talk, man. We're going to talk a lot of big blow in the anime community, right? So we're going to talk about that. But we also have some other things so hopefully some more positive stuff coming out but last week we had a pretty fun episode um we talked about some tedious things when it comes to the process of building we got a lot of feedback on that from that episode so we appreciate everybody who told us their most tedious thing if you missed last week's episode here is what you missed before the weather before the decals before anything when, you, when everything's painted you can finally put it together and you can finally stand up and like all right i'm i'm starting to see it now Let's do the whole and that is it let us know in the comments or go back and rewatch that video if there's anything tedious that y'all do during the build process um it could be masking taping building or well, masking is taping painting right cleaning not just the the aftermath right and everything's kind of like laid out and put out in front of you but let us know in the comments down below we're going to try a different angle too we're going to try to be this angle for this week testing this out so we could be a little bit more even kill when it comes to um clipping up these videos too but of course as always before we get started still of course happy women history month last week was um international women international women day it was international women day yeah on friday last friday so happy international women day and happy women's history month so that is that thank you for all the female builders out there we appreciate what y'all do and all the females in our lives we appreciate what y'all do every single day next up of course as always we start off with greetings we start off the week with something just making sure our mental is right man and austin brother how's your week been man how is the weekend how did the weekend treat you weekend was really relaxing um I, I just sat around, worked on um worked on some kits and played some video games, something I haven't done in Ooh. a long time. I have I have not gotten a chance to dive back into War Thunder like I did. Um and I immediately realized uh, remember why I left <laughs> and also why it's so addicting. Uh so it's it's like a game it's a game I love to hate, but um I, I, I love it to death and hate it to death at the same time. But no, the weekend was very relaxing, sat around, um just uh, pretty much worked on just, you know lazing about and recharging the batteries getting ready for this week and so far for this week for work it's been um just you know as is just following the yeah. course nothing new nothing changed and i think i've finally gotten into the groove of um a groove of uh kind of just letting it flow i used to try to find a hurricane so i can tackle it and uh now i'm just sitting back and letting the hurricanes come to me i'm there on shore go. and uh you know i'm just like well let it come to me when it's time to come to me Come to me when if it's not here yet you know what we're just gonna relax and chill that's it and that's all we can ask for nowadays it's just a kind of have a chill day um work for me this weekend was man it feels like after a while you get robbed though because by friday night you kind of just like uh, drain from the week and then saturday afternoon comes so quick and of course we lost that hour uh was spring mm-hmm. forward so um the weekend went one hour quicker than normal for Great. me. Um, was able to sit down and chill at Hobby Town. Man, it was a packed house there this weekend, but it was good to see see the bills and sit down and talk with some people. And um, they were watching Dragon Ball Super Resurrection F as as needed you know, for this past weekend. We'll dive a little bit more into that later. But overall, man, just trying to stay out of flu season out of coughing and got my i don't know if you are you a, a juice guy like you drink juices i do like i juices. know because 
Yeah, I do love juices. I, I just um I don't happen to buy many. Uh, uh it's just I, I tend to stick to water, but I do like juices. Gotcha. I've been drinking some of this. This is called the Power of Green. Got it from Trader Joe's. Okay. Out there. They got cucumber, spinach, kale, lemon, green apple, ginger, celery. And it's super the people foods. Out, yeah, super foods. And for the people out there that might want to pause it. It's five dollars at Trader Joe's. I'll try to drink um try to drink it first thing in the morning, but only have a little bit left. So mm. I'll borrow another bottle today. So I'm gonna finish this off tonight. Be good to sleep on it. Get all that up, up, in, yeah, and out, mm-hmm. in, yeah, and mm-hmm. out. You know, all that flush, all that stuff out. <laughs> purify, <That's>, purify. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But that's it, man. Let us know in the comments, people. How's y'all's week been? If it's been kind of dull, we got some big news again in the anime community. We could dab a little bit to it now. Um, I'm about to say shout out. Ooh, rest in peace, rest in heaven, rest in paradise to a curatorium of the founder the the father of dragon ball Mm -hmm. dragon ball z Mm -hmm. and um which was impactful that death was out of nowhere shocking Mm -hmm. and the grandfather people call him the grandfather shonen so Mm -hmm. shout out to um everybody that's been putting out some dope pictures with the toy photography and all the nice posts and even down to like people drawing like the manga and stuff like that so that was a deep deep hit in the anime community this past weekend an absolute legend i mean shoot does legend even come close to describing him i mean i don't think so an icon a staple of the medium um the the man who brought who really inspired generations of anime in the west and in my opinion is kind of the sole reason why it's as popular as it is today oh yeah anime was to be something talked about in the corners now on the street you can bring anybody up to dragon ball z and everybody will know what you're talking about. oh yeah so, absolutely i mean, I mean uh, it's it that was a huge blow it was such a it was such an out of the blue blow i didn't even believe it at first i I, yeah. heard, I found out at work and i said no this must be a joke post or something like that right and then they stepped coming in kept coming in and i was like oh my god nah this can't be and i was going around you know just kind of kind of just sh- took it aback yeah like, it's shaking insane. Yeah, so we'll dive a little bit more of that and the impact of Dragon Ball as a whole later on in this segment. But of course, as always, brother, any new pickups, building or breaking down that backlog, have you you picked up anything new? I have not picked up any kits, but I did pick up some paint I've been using. Okay. Um, and this is a uh, so the paint order hadn't come in yet, but there there's something that I was at Hobby Town that I haven't noticed that they had, and they were all acting like, of course, Austin, it's been there forever. But no, I know for a fact. Let me I've guess. Walked in there several times. Yeah. Alkali, Alkali, Al. Um, when you walk in, it's to the left. If you're walking towards the back, it's with all the tester rattle cans. There's a air. There is a good set of metallic. And like candy paint, airbrush paint, mm. Alclad, Alclad, that's what it's called. Alclad, Alclad. paint. It's no. right there. Like if you, you know that rack, it's a rack that's right there for um the paint for the war, war hammer, not war machine, the war hammer. And like the walkways right there. And on that side. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I know what you're talking there, about. Yeah, yeah. There's a, is it Alclad? Uh, no, it's not that. Um, okay. I, I do know what you're talking about, though. I, I would like to try those because um, Me too. I, I keep Me hearing too. nothing but good things about. Um, but no, um, so I was uh, I was in the airbrush section and I saw some surface primer at the mm-hmm. bottom, but I saw a particular one. Um, and while I'm waiting for my 1500 black surface primer to come in, uh, that DHL <sighs> decided to say, hey, it was supposed to be delivered to you tomorrow. Um, nah, next week. And I was like, what? <laughs> you got an update on yours, man? Mine I, I, has an update. Yeah, dude, something's nice. going on because stuff I ordered back in March 2nd has just gotten updated to where they'll be delivered on uh, what March, what what is this, 11th, uh, the 13th or 14th or 15th. So Mine doesn't like, even have a date. Dude, I don't know what's going on. Something happened where their whole... It arrived in down. town. So it might, mine might be with yours. Maybe my, there was like 
we got two orders going off that way. Yeah, yeah. They, they, <laughs> we got one driver. He only works Wednesdays. <laughs> right. But go ahead, man. What you pick up? Um, so I picked up this Surface Primer from Vallejo, but it is a black Surface Primer. And it's actually really interesting. So this black Surface Primer, if you look at it, it is acrylic polyurethane mixture. Mm -hmm. So when it goes on, it's incredibly smooth. And I, I, I did take some pictures of it when it's just on when I primed up some pieces for the exam, mm -hmm. HD, uh, HD exam. Uh, uh, hints, everybody, I'm working on an HD exam. <laughs> um, the the color, the the paint securance to the actual piece is nothing but shockingly good. It, I am wholly impressed by this. Yeah, I picked um, that up before. Is I liked it because. I, I, Mm -hmm. My fault for cutting you no, off. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Reason why I picked that up is because I didn't know other color primer existed outside of white and gray and pink. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. know black and like you could find it, it's a thousand grit, right? I think it's a mm -hmm. thousand grit. The mahogany, which is the brown primer. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't know because everybody would say, oh, "Oh, if you want to do candy paint, you need a black. We need black. You know, put jet black down, put chrome." So I was like, "Oh." If I, could, I think that also comes in gloss too, right? I believe so. Yeah, that that primer, you could get it in black. This, does, does that say gloss on it? Uh, gloss black on the bottle? Because I remember nope, I bought this is black. I remember one time I bought one that was like gloss black. It feels primer. like it's gloss because it, it it's not it's not matte at all. It, it'll yeah. shimmer. I use it as like a to skip the step. Like okay, I need jet black. Perfect. I got you know black primer, but go ahead. No, no, it's, no. no. I'm, I'm, it's smooth, I, dude. It is smooth. Like I was shocked at how I'm looking at it right now. The paint. I have blue, purple, dark gray on this, and mm -hmm. I mean, it is shockingly smooth. And uh, I have metallic silver and gunmetal gray, and I used on it. And dude, it. I am wholly impressed by this. If this is, I, I don't even know. I, I don't know. I, I, this is my first. Wait time till you get that fifteen hundred. That's what I was thinking. If, if, if this is what's to come, that fifteen hundred has got some prime com competition now. As, yeah, the fifteen hundred. In certain cases, that black fifteen hundred could be used as paint. If you like, y'all just wanted to have a black frame. You could probably that same. Like I was looking at this, and I was like, I don't even need to paint the under of the feet anymore. I don't need to paint them black. They're, yeah. It's already the, there and it's surprisingly tough like i have not people know i'm not really the i don't treat my kids nicely <laughs> all the time but um not a single <laughs> chip not a single chip and, and any other scratch that happened is a reasonable scratch that i would i would not really expect anything to defend it but it's, even there minimal i i cooper I, I wish you were here with me i could show you this in person oh i, I believe it this i believe it insanely good i'm i'm mm -hmm. wholly surprised okay that's what's up man i mean adding different repertoires and different things to the tool bag especially like a, a brand like that is i think it's a good like i said i think it's a good primer i've used it before mm -hmm. um it's just with the 1500 you get that can on that jar for like six dollars i mean you get yep. legit run that jar might be able to last you a long it's gonna last you a long time this is one of the thicker Vallejo bottles. Um, mm -hmm. Usually they come into small little cups about that size. Mm -hmm. um, this one, I, I, and I've only used maybe the top, a little bit at the top. So that 1500 and this combined, I'll never have to buy Black Primer until I'm like 58. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. This is like 20 short years. <laughs> you picked up anything else? Nah, nah, no kits, no nothing else. I'm, I'm saving up. Uh, there's a big kit I want to buy at the end of this month. So save now, pay later type of deal. Yeah, type save now, deal. buy later. Okay. Don't, don't want to go into debt. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. Charge me, it. <laughs> with me, um, I have Coop's Corner coming out this week. So I didn't want, I don't want to show off everything I've got. I did get a decent haul in. So if you're listening and you're going to watch Coop's Corner, I, apolo no, I don't want to say I apologize. It's not a whole lot of hunt because I'm not trying to make those videos too long. I think I went to Hobby Town and then I got some stuff in, and some stuff I didn't haven't shown in a while. But one mm -hmm. thing I could mm -hmm. show because I'm like 
I've said it before. I want to show something on the camera, not save it all for Coot's Corner. Um, uh, Andy, shout out to him. I'll rave about him for a long time. This is a kit I had. My second kit, third kit back into the game. And obviously it's no mark hell right now. It's, God knows where it's at. It's somewhere in that garage. <laughs> but I picked up the expansion parts for it. Knowing eventually I would get it again. And Andy wanted that ODO and he sold it to me for really. We don't gatekeep. And he sold it to me for 20 bucks. And I'm not gonna hold him to it. So 20 it bucks. It is the master grade death site. Ooh. Hell, endless waltz. This I have the expansion set that came with P Bandai that was with Ultron, Toggies 2. And now Death Sight Hell. I'm trying to think, and I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be right. This is from Endless Waltz. I can't, I gotta see the difference. And everybody knows I'm a Gundam Wing stan. I just never compared the difference between the Endless Waltz Death Sight Hell custom versus the Endless Waltz Death Sight Hell custom. In the glory of losers the manga version the manga version so i never i, I haven't compared it but we was able to pick it back up mm -hmm. for obviously dirt cheap mm -hmm. so um yeah definitely twenty dollars why not yeah trust that's, that's less than a certain high grades now man yeah that, that's less so, than a lot of high grades actually <laughs> a lot right. of the newer ones the newer ones are like 25. and, he, <laughs> and andy came up i think he spent maybe a dollar on the raffle ticket you know he does oh. he just likes winning so yeah other than that you gotta watch coop's corner handsome host by the way um, <laughs> to see what else we picked up that's what's up Yo. man that's what we, that's what we have that's what we have and let us know in the comments below people have y'all picked up anything y'all got some hauls in pretty recent so let us know next up we have what's cooking we have cooking when we have primed up austin you kind of already went into it a little bit so mm -hmm. go ahead and let them know what we got working on yeah so i'm working on the high grade uh destiny exam one this is what it looks like painted so far um and the camera doesn't do it justice uh the paint this is the this is only the third or fourth time no second time eh, third time i've done serious mixing of paint so i actually looked up the paint recipe for mm. the, for this kit and apparently there's two recipes there's one for the older high grade that everything's actually much darker mm -hmm. and then there's the newer one which is a bit more complex it required light blue purple blue white and um and uh i think in one of them it needed a uh, a certain type of blue like sky blue slash indie blue um to mix together and so far so so far i was really worried about how the darker blue showed out it looked a lot more purple my camera isn't doing it justice because it's it's darker over here mm -hmm. but it, it, i'll take a picture and probably snap it up but um i was really worried about how purple it came out at first and then the second blue the lighter blue of the rest of the body uh came out and painted it and i gotta say it all when it came together it comes together it all looks fantastic i was really happy with the blend um and i've already talked about the the undercoat that i think the polystyrene or polystyrene the polymilethane is already yeah. is really helping with the color here to it um mm -hmm. i was trying to do pre-shading but my my iwata airbrush uh uh just didn't want to work <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't know what's wrong with it so I, I take it apart and clean it and it still has problems activating like it won't let air go through anyway um the the so i had to rely on my hobby town my mr hobby uh 0.5 millimeter airbrush so appreciating is out the game when you're dealing with a high grade with a oh, five yeah. because you just open the tap even it's, slightly it's, gonna, it's yeah it's all yeah that it's, is should be like pg big master grade pieces the point 0.5 yeah the, the point 0.5 should really be used for just top coating or top coating priming or using for larger surface areas where you can you can just either dry across or if you want to do pre-shading you're right pg is probably the only thing you can really hit yeah. 
um because it's the only way you can be more precise with it but i so i kind of threw that idea out the water and said f it i'll just go for the metal robot figure look so mm -hmm. i'll just go all out just cover every piece with at least two layers um maybe three of the same color make sure i get everything and so far so good i am i am wholly liking this uh and you know it's crazy because i think i gave this a pretty high grade or a pretty standard grade when it came out um when my real grade but you know building mm -hmm. it and painting it has elevated this to one of my favorite high grade builds i've done this year um, oh wow and and I, I maybe it's the airbrush because it seems like every high grade i build now <laughs> it keeps getting better and better and better absolutely because you're learning yeah, I, it must be that because this this looks fantastic in my opinion. I there's small little details too I didn't even notice um, at first. Like there's piping, there's like a actual like piston, not movable pistons, mm -hmm. but like engraved yeah. pistons into the yeah. inner frame. Um, there's like little tiny separations of gray. There's small little indication marks, like a, a like little perforated marks on the waistline that I never noticed before. Like on the side of it, it's it. This thing is just surprising me every 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 time i look at it so this is what i'm building so far um i'm almost done uh i just have to finish up the other half of all the internal parts and it will be good to go i plan on snapping photos of it um even right now just in the in progress i have some in progress photos as well i need to edit and upload as well as the unboxing of it so mm. i have a i have a man i i was i was in love with i'm in love with this thing right now uh, this is what i'm doing so yeah work in progress and i'm in love with it that's what's up man um i'm working on a dari blade and mm -hmm. first switch for mercury kit pretty good build i'm probably like what everybody else says all the raves mm -hmm. no poly caps mm -hmm. um simple enough to where you not a whole lot of pieces two or three runners yep and working on my mask and <clears throat> um i don't have it around me now do i have the box i thought i did i thought i did but i don't um we are masking off like the red to have different shades of red mm -hmm. and i was worried i was like man i wanted the red to be a little bit darker on like the second hue of red but it came out to be like you could tell it's a different red so which is fine um I think you showed me that i, I remember you sent me a picture of the yeah. red with the with the inner frame colored underneath it, mm -hmm. it looked yeah good. it looked good yeah i did that the back skirt so let me ask you because cd gave me a couple of pointers because i'm mm -hmm. trying to get into like obviously in depth with masking do you mask off the little sections first or do you paint so basically mm -hmm. you have let's just say that back skirt for an example right mm -hmm. i should have a picture in here Matter of fact, I might have a piece to help you. Should have a picture in here, fellas. Here we go. So here mm -hmm. is that is gun metal, right? Mm -hmm. And I masked off, I painted it red, and then I masked off the red and painted it gun metal. Everything you see that's gun metal. Uh -huh. Now, would you go gunmetal first, the mask off the gunmetal, and then go right over top of it? Um, usually, if it's if it's smaller and your main coat is the largest surface area, mm -hmm. usually you would paint the smaller parts first, mask those, and then paint the larger. I think mm. um, uh, in builder yeah. or maybe Naoki um, showed off, uh, but you could do either way. It, it's it's really just a personal preference. Uh, I think it goes quicker if you do the small ones because you're doing le you're doing less masking. We're not you're doing yeah, the same amount true. of masking, but you're just doing it at steps at a time. Yeah. Um, I think Naoki has a video on on YouTube where he's doing the under the underfoot of the wing zero. And you know how all those details and, and, mm -hmm. and sections and anything like he first he starts off with what he wants to be light gray, what he wants to be silver, what he wants to be gun bell, and what he wants to be gold. And he does, you know, he's only two parts of gold, so gold, gold, mask, mask, right? Silver, 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 mask, 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 gray, mask, mask, mm. and then um, you know, whatever else. And then the then once all those are covered, then red for the whole foot. And then once the red dries, then he strips off those small bits of paint. I mean, small bits of mask. Yeah and, yeah, and that way you can, you, 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 that way you don't do red and then have the horrible life of having to mask off all the red 
right? Yeah. And then just open two little holes to be gold and then cover those up. But it's a personal preference. I know some people who do it backwards. I've done it backwards with this backpack. Um, mm. the, the main color of the backpack was going to be actually uh, black. But um, what I, kid is that? This is for the exam. Yeah. Exam. Okay. Yeah. So the backpack's supposed to be um darker gray, and uh, I uh, I did um darker gray, and then I masked off and I made it blue, and then I masked off and made it gray, uh, light gray. Um, now I have to mask off this light gray area next, and then make the whole thing dark gray. So I did it sense. backwards. Yeah, I, I did backwards, which um, it sure it took me longer, but I wasn't thinking at the time. I was just enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> okay. Yeah, get buffled my place <laughs> because. One of the reasons I asked is I want to paint the permit scores or the fake permit scores that's on the Dari blade mm -hmm. rather than use like the sticker. I was like, mm -hmm. uh, that's inside is black with the color, the fluorescent yellow or green. I'm going to use. Mm -hmm. Is it in the just, inner frame that that piece that's that's supposed? It's like a sticker they gave you to put on the inner frame. And it's like, not the inner move. frame. It's like it's on like the shoulder cap, right? And there's a, mm -hmm. in, there's a cutout in the shoulder cap that you put the sticker on, and then you put mm -hmm. like a, a clear smoke piece. Oh, on okay. I got you. I got you. So, yeah. I want to I want to paint that, then mask that off, and then paint the rest of it red, and then peel everything back. So yeah, that works. Yeah, that's yeah. what um that's what I'm working on. Like I said, just the Dari blade. Um, try to do some toy photography as well. I was able to pull out this robot spirit. I was kind of in a mood to take some Gundam shots. So I pulled out the Robot Spirit RX. Just try to get it in some vanilla pose. And man, how much the eyes deceive you, right? Like, look, looking down, the Gundam looks so menacing. Mm -hmm. But man, looking up at it like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, when it's like this, it's like, uh, I don't, I don't know. But when it, when you get it like that, you it know what it looks it, it, it looks, looks menacing it, and, and you know what's crazy is that that's kind of by design too they they wanted to be like if you look down it looks pissed off but if you look up it's supposed to represent hope and that's supposed to be the hero's hero's yeah. face but sometimes it looks like it's crying or it's really really sad that something's happening yeah <laughs> and it's just so it's it's hard it's like all or nothing with this um with Gundam man Zaku's the same way it's either they're photogenic and they look great or they just don't look good at all when you take a photo so mm -hmm. other than that that's pretty much all i've been working on i'm going to break out the exam three in a little bit and probably chop that up this week chop that up this week we got mm -hmm. galaxy con this weekend so i'm not going to be at hobby town um you going to galaxy con yeah don't i'm going go to go to galaxy con miss we try to make it like a, a year thing, a yearly thing. Ari and I and the kids, we head up there ever since March. And then in May, there is so like a, something to do every month for me, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. Because now we got Mar Galaxy Con in March, the IPMS in Fairfax, mm -hmm. which is at Fairfax High School. Oh, I, don't wow. know where, I don't know where you know, if you know where that's at. I, I know where that's at, yeah. It's in mm -hmm. Fairfax High School um that's in april and then in may is another kind of like a it's a big convention it's a comic book convention though so i don't expect like a lot of figures or a lot of anime stuff there comic book conventions are a little bit different from like an anime convention focus a lot more yeah. solely on literally just comic books and superhero american paraphernalia right right yeah. so other than that that's about it man uh let us know in the comments people what y'all have been working on if y'all working on anything new with kits, things in that nature, I'm sorry. I'm getting all these notifications about the NFL free agency. It's turning up. Russell's at the Steelers. Yes, sir. We saw Saquon today. I saw that. I, I don't know. Was was that the best? Did you guys need to run another run back? I thought your running game was really good. Yeah. It's kind of like. People say, and these are the experts, that when healthy, Saquon could probably arguably be up there with Christian McCaffrey. Oh, I, I believe that. No, I, so it's like, that. it doesn't matter how good your running game is. If Christian McCaffrey hits the free agency, you go get him. Yeah. Right? So okay. if you get, it, it's kind of like that. Like, we got, like, oh, good. 
we got a little bit one dimensional, right? Like we got like running the ball. Yeah, we didn't have I, a lot of people catching the ball out the backfield. So I thought that was because the quarter your Jalen Hurts was hurt because you guys were at one point. Yeah. I, this is what I heard. So this is not what I thought. This is what I heard. Somebody was saying you guys were essentially a high school football team by the end of the season because you couldn't Pretty run much. anything. Right. And but we didn't have if we had a running back that was at least able to come out of the backfield and catch some mm-hmm. passes. Not saying that the guys couldn't before us, before them, but I think this one helps. It gives you that dynamic. You don't have to switch them out. You know, you got a guy that could possibly pop off a 40-yard run and turn around mm-hmm. and give you a 20-yard catch, right? Like So it's like, mm-hmm. at least you know when he's in the game, you can mix it up. I, I, I think that you guys um... – Really, I think the strength of you guys is going to be the uh, defensive backfield. If you guys can buff up your defensive backfield and stop yeah. anything getting deep on you, and you guys, because you guys didn't lose any games by a lot except for Sam Fran and what? I can't remember Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, maybe. But all yeah. those were all those were top echelons already. You know, they yeah. were hunting for champion the the NFC championship at that point. Um, so yeah, no, I, I think once you guys solve up that backfield and second one's definitely going to be a good addition. Um, I'm still mm-hmm. waiting for anything about my team. <laughs> Have you noticed my team's been very quiet? <laughs> Which it might be a good thing. The Cardinals might need to be quiet. They got a lot of riffraff last few years. Yeah. We're, we're in, if you, for those listening, I, my, I am an Arizona Cardinals fan. Uh, and um, it's been a sad two years, three years. <laughs> Next up, we have what's new. We typically share from Gumpla Nerd, which is on Instagram. His Instagram, shout the out goat. to him. The goat. <laughs> Did you know IGN was even using his... <laughs> He was even using his uh his his blog or Instagram thing at one point. Oh no, I didn't know yeah. that. If I remember correctly, I think it was IGN picked up his stuff and it was, he was talking about the Seed Freedom movie. And mm. I was like, "Geez, couple nerds everywhere, man!" Everywhere. <laughs> Shout out to this guy or whoever that what team. Mm-hmm. We got the Caliber and P Bandai Shadokin. This is releasing in August. Every day I look at the Caliburn and every day is growing on me. Only thing about the Caliburn that I really don't like. Mm-hmm. And this is just a Witch for Mercury thing, apparently. Mm-hmm. And it might just be a Suleta thing. Mm-hmm. It's the eyes. It yes. looks like an SD eyes. Yes. Looks, and I'm like... <sighs> That's everyone's complaint. I, I have seen where people have modified it, where they take just a little bit of the eyes off, and it looks like a beast. It looks like from every position, it looks like it's pissed off. Right? But on these big, giant yeah. bug eyes, these big, mm-hmm. giant type of look into your soul type of eyes just in my opinion don't work either they're they're great one position maybe but it almost all the other positions it's a little bit too much even on the um the aerial i was like eh. now question Can, does this light up mm, I the first picture looked like it had lights on is that like it, it looks like it from what it looks like it looked like it yeah the eyes look like it's lit looks like a little probably a little led light in there inside it okay yeah now, I wonder how difficult or different it would be. It's not difficult. But tell mm-hmm. me how this kit will look. Same, if you want to do a kit bash, this ain't really, this is a poor man's kit bash. Just mm-hmm. take the head off of this and put a unicorn head up there in destroyer mode. It would look- That's, it, the, the white unicorn head in destroyer mode. Not destroy mode, unicorn, unicorn mode, unicorn mode. In unicorn mode, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know in, in the unicorns, like, modes, is, that horn is broken up into segments, right, as it goes yeah. up. So it has, like, those four little parts. Paint two of those parts black. Right. And then the rest of it white. Because it I like the, bad. the visor and mm-hmm. then the faceplate on the unicorn mode on a unicorn, where it's just, mm-hmm. like, all you see is, like, a, almost like, um, what's those new cars? Lucid? With the headlights, the air. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the headlights is just like one stream, like mm-hmm. that looks like a cyclops type of look. Mm-hmm. Like That's what I want. A cyclone, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that, cyclops, that'd be dope. So I think this will look like will look good like that as well. But that's yeah, the no. and I don't. Obviously, none of us is picking this up. This is expensive. No. This is a Candyman Rip special. Shout out to Candyman Rip. And, and in my opinion, I believe that this is a. I, I believe the high grade actually looks a little bit better than this. In my opinion, I, mm. I have to build it to. From the pictures I've seen, I don't know. It looks like it's overly detailed in this situation. 
And we have a couple of um, the Gachiman mechanical bust. Do you know how popular these things are? Those things are Appar- apparently really popular. They're, they're really popular in Japan. I didn't realize how popular they were. They're they're really popular. I wonder if they're equivalent to like Funkos. I like, think so. I think it might be that. Yeah. Then we have this destroy Gundam coming out oh. soon. Do you see the pictures compared to the <laughs> the Psycho Gundam? Yeah. Did, did, do you see the two ladies holding the box that comes in? <laughs> It, 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 this thing's oh my god look at the b guys there's so many beam effects uh, i want to try it that's five oh, ten oh my god 15 that's 21 3 6 9 32 31 beam effects Dude. Not that's just the green ones, not counting the four dude. in the middle. Dude, dude, this is a Christmas tree. <laughs> this is a Christmas decoration at one point, man. There's so many beams. That's can you imagine how many? Like, if you ever was missing a you're never missing a beam saber ever again. You know what be you know what would suck. Hmm. You know, obviously you can modify. Imagine if you couldn't put these in a beam saber. They uh, were too big. They would just be too big to fit <laughs> in a beam saber. I would be pissed. <laughs> I would be pissed. These, these look like one one hundreds, but if they're like some type of non scale that only fit to that, I'd be pissed. I, there's no reason I need an ocean of green beam savers. Oh Jesus! Let me ask you this real quick: What color beam saber are you? Green or pink? Uh, blue. You're the blue one. Who has the blue one? I prefer blue. Uh, the Delta Plus. The Delta Plus has blue, but really, it's white. But it's blue, bluish white. I don't think I, I have. I seen those. Uh, the Witch Mercury, the Ariel has a blue white saber as well. I mean, light saber, mm. blue beam saber. I guess you might be right. I've I might have seen. It. I've always used to seeing Gundam wing kits, things like that. Is, is it green? Is, uh, green and pink are the most popular. I think there's more green and pink than blue by a far margin. I wonder if it's it's a staple in like Universal Century, green and pink. I, let's see there's there's blue in your reverse century but it's only like three suits that use it there's yellow but there's only one suit or two suits that use it. i think the hakushiki and maybe a couple other from the yeah Zeta um, Gundam. what's he call it guys uh full frontals synagies <laughs> yeah sorry full frontal okay. synagies um right that that's kind of like the off color but yeah red is like the quintessential color for i think other universes as well i can't think of any other universes except for maybe a handful that use blue but the majority of them use Except the Billfighter. Bill Fighters, what color of the rainbow do you want to pick? Do yeah, you want purple? purple. <laughs> do, you, do you want aqua? Do you want fuchsia? Do you want <laughs> some weird mixture of all of them? Rainbow? Brown? We have a brown saber. <laughs> like, they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this comes with a lot of beam saber effects. You shouldn't run out of any. I mean, you shouldn't be the first person that buys this. Well, mm-hmm. you know what? Marvin. I feel like, yeah. Sam, <laughs> those guys, <laughs> they're not they're not gonna they're gonna do all of it if you buy this you're gonna have to put every beam saber in there yeah those guys like the ridiculous like if you look the more ridiculous it looks the bit easier it's gonna buy it's huge too shout Jeez. out to those guys yeah. what i want to see is a, a mixture i want to see it i wonder how different that will look the blue the green the purple the pink beam mm-hmm. saber effects it would look like a, it would look like a 1980s disco kind of right Just, <laughs> we got the clear let's see one 100 uh oh, ages um aegis yeah the one 100 aegis, aegis from mobile gun of seed i want to love this but god i just can't look get at that away. that looks terrible man dude i i want to love this but i love the gun of seed the original series but dude this the aegis has just never grown on me and look it, at this weird, photo. It, it looks worse. <laughs> I can't tell where the face is at. Dude, it's... Do you see the eyes? I do not see thing? the eyes. No, I do not see that. I literally see the head camera and the... This kind of looks and... like a skull. That's all I can pick up is the the, the, the antenna and the horn. And I, that's how I know where the head is. But I don't, <laughs> know, what it's, I don't know what face it is. I don't know what it's looked like. I, I don't know. I think these are always cool if you want to do like a mix, um, like a half and half. 
Yeah, and, and you know what? The the very clear ones, or the ones with the very hint of color, so they're mostly mm -hmm. clear, but they have a hint of color in them, like the the Xeon clear mm -hmm. clear kit, actually looks pretty good. Um, it's when they go, uh, how can I say this? It's like when more. they go, yeah, yeah. I see, which is like a lot of color. Yeah, if they go. If this was a lighter red, a more see-through red, yes, you'll be able to work with it. Yes, because you can't really see the framework. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, and, and also the this what is it? Uh, the the Xeon has all those inner frame parts that you can paint mm -hmm. in color. And this it, the early master grades, even the remasters for these C kits are their inner frames aren't overly complex. They're pretty simple. Um, so mm -hmm. there's not really much to even see and there, a lot of it's all connection joints from the armor So you end up with all these cross lines from armor before you get to the inner frame. So mm -hmm. for me these clear kits just don't work Sheesh The destroyer Dude. Gundam compared to two high grades <laughs> and that's what it kneeling. That's it's kneeling. It's, it's in a transformation state. So it's kneeling down There you go. Here it is compared to the psycho Gundam With all its glory Jeez, man! Oh, man! Oh, man! So Jeez. many ideas for certain people. Yeah, I have it. Enjoy this kit. Whoever wants it. Hey, um, George, GPWC winner. He needs those big parts to put on his kit. Heck yeah, bro! He's gonna take that backpack and just stick it on. You gonna find somewhere for it? You gonna yeah, get somebody's like finger? <laughs> <laughs> then we have the Chidokin. Now this is the MGX Strike yep. Gundam. Oh, this is look, it does look good. It does. It it, it does look good. Go ahead. No, with the light popping off of it, it does look good. Yeah. My, my only issue is, is that all that gold and mm -hmm. how much of it do you see? You just see hints of it coming out. I mean, the, the overall build is fantastic from what I hear, but $245? It's more expensive than some Master Grace. Oh, no. This Wait, is 160 I saw it for 220 You saw it somewhere, somebody flipping it for 220 Oh, oh you know what? My, someone might have been flipping it then. Yeah, yeah this right. is a well, this is 165 at Hobby Town. Okay, never mind then. Then at 165, it might you might buy it. No, still it's still a little bit too pricey for me. And plus, I'm not a huge fan of the Strike Freedom. I like the Strike. I like the Freedom. The Strike Freedom is where they lost me. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? I like Goten. I like Trunks, but Go Tanks I do not like. Yep. 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 Okay. I mean, who who has a T-shirt of Go Tanks? <laughs> <laughs> who who who? <laughs> Everyone has trunks. <laughs> Goten doesn't get a lot of love. Everyone loves trunks. <laughs> uh, here we have Bandai Gundam Universe Strike Freedom figure. Uh, Gundam Universe Red Astray. The Gundam Universe is a dope if y'all want to get into some toy photography. Very Robot easy. Spirits and a Phantom Gundam. Robot Spirits of the Schwarzette from Witch for Mercury. Ro metal Robot of the Destiny Gundam Spec 2. You know, I, I've yet to see anybody who buys these, but I feel like these major collectors who buy these usually just buy the Destiny because the wing effects look amazing. Oh, yeah. I, and I've seen some of those, like, uh, I'm sorry, what's the case where you put all your anime figures in? Detox. Detox. I've seen Detox filled with this thing, and it is a showstopper. But it I've, is. I've never seen any other any other metal builds really going to sell that well. But then again, I'm not. I'm Japan. In Japan, they must be uh, successful out the wazoo. In America, probably just not as much. Oh, Immortal Justice High Grade. High Here grade. we go. <laughs> Ultraman Jack action. This is the Ultraman Jack uh, figureized standard kit, which is extremely well done. Extremely well done. This is this character is in all three seasons. This suit was introduced in season two. I have almost all. I've almost built almost all the figureized standard um, Ultraman figures, and they're, they're really good. I mean, you get a lot of accessories too that don't come with the SH Fig Arts. Mm. You get like a decent amount of weapons, and you have the ability to do LEDs. So, not bad for seventy seven dollars. Hmm. To be honest with you, looks good. Yeah, um, I don't know if I'll pick it up. I doubt it. You like the suit, but it's not your favorite, is what I'm guessing. 
I, I, it's just the kits for me all of a sudden, man. Like, they're not... I'm getting more into the SH Figures line or getting more into it. Mm -hmm. What you could do with them on a toy photography level is something... It's, it's way better than the kits. Mm, I got you. Probably a lot less stress of you not really having to build it, make sure it's all painted perfectly and all that. It's just good to go out the box, essentially. Right. And then yeah, you get, like, gappage yeah but yeah like, you know like, like i get the waste stuff I, I saw that common writer that high def high quality common writer action figure that came out the mm -hmm. one that has like almost real hair out the back mm. of it and stuff like that and like a movable cape dude i've never been so shocked at how good an action figure could look i, yeah. I was floored now the price then <laughs> made it <laughs> it made it very clear why but dude the box art the kit it looked amazing yeah there's one at Hobby Town that looks good too. That's fifty percent mm -hmm. off. It's just like one fifty, mm -hmm. but it's, it's so it's going for seventy. Mm. Here it is. Some more glam shots of Ultraman Jack. He's like the USA's version of Ultraman in the show. Of course, he oh. would be so <laughs> bigger, <Yeah. laughs> bigger, better, faster, stronger. He, he's a what's what's the Gundam? Uh, the Maxter Gundam. He's the Maxter right. Gundam. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, he the guy drives a Mustang. Oh, like a, no. and it's like the 2010 Mustang at that, like the the Shelby. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but it comes with a lot of stuff. It comes with a lot of stuff. Like I said, for seventy five dollars, it's going to be a decent size. He's obviously you could tell he's um a bigger kit, mm -hmm. so he's going to stand higher and taller than most of the Kamen Rider figures. I mean, Kamen Rider Ultraman figures. Mm. So. Pick him up. Anybody that's listening, go give Ultraman on Netflix a watch. One of my favorite animes. It got me hooked into the Ultraman, this Ultraman series by reading the manga and stuff. Um, don't really do a whole lot of the Ultraman lore. Like, oh, you know, the suits and the rubber suits and stuff. Don't do a whole lot of that. But this, this is a great way if the figure arts kits to get into like your fix of an Ultraman if you don't want to spend money on the SH figure arts. Dark Horse 30 minute no. <laughs> Next. They just Next. they really need to get rid oh, of this. They recolors? They're doing recolors now of it? Oh wow, okay. Of this? Yeah, that I have that. Matter of fact, I actually just had it on my desk not too long ago, but Huh, they're doing recalls of it. No, it's 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 a perfectly good kit. Oh, they added some weapons and stuff like that. Okay, and this it's is the 30 Espato. minute missions EXM Espato, the one that, of course, will turn into a plane if Austin likes it. Exactly, that's exactly <laughs> why I bought it. And the transformation was actually kind of disappointing, but it looks cool in the photos. But uh, yeah, nothing there locks into place, everything is janky and, and is loose. So, damn. Yeah, I think they expect you to paint it, but I'm not going to go that far for 30 bucks or 9 30 bucks up for 15 bucks. <laughs> Jesus. Is yep. that the head of it? Like the Where? face? No, that's the, the back. At the very right? top? Right here? Right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the face. It's just one big visor. Wait a minute. Yeah. Doesn't he look like he's backwards? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because see his feet, his his it's it's a it's like the wound wart. His feet go his his actual balance that goes backwards. And yeah. This looks hey. like a backpack should attach right here. Yeah, no. yeah. Usually, I, I defend these thirty-minute missions from you, Coop, but I'm gonna let you have it. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 this one was a disappointment for me. I didn't... <laughs> and we have the SD heroes that must be running on some type of Saturday morning cartoon. A lot in Japan. of dude, a lot of success in Japan. Here in the U.S., not so much. But in Japan, it makes sense. Then we have the P Bandai one forty-four. What is this? What the heck is this? Looks like it was just announced an hour ago. Wow. What is it? So it's a Witch from Mercury. Oh, it's from the it's from the uh, manga series, I think. Gondun G U N D N O D E. Gondun. It looks like it's from the Witch of Mercury from oh, the yeah. uh, uh, permanent scores. Yeah, this is a Witch from Mercury kit through and through. It, it must be from the manga that uh Witch of Mercury manga that, that they made. That they mm. got the blue one from mm. with the big arm. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad. Yeah, kind of the head. 
kind of gives me a 30 minute mission feel though with the feet i don't know the feet are flat out but the pat labor head the pat labor head is that what it looks like to you like a rabbit right yeah yeah and the the antenna is really shortened out and i think it's because his feet are laid back when he's floating Mm -hmm. i would need to see what he looks like when he's just standing on his two feet i wonder if that would be yeah see for some reason he's just always floating is that just the natural stanza (laughs) <laughs> that, that face looks a little weird though that face looks like he's a he's just constantly going like oh <laughs> yeah like like he's about to charge up a beam effect <laughs> well yeah like he's about to scream out like liquid acid or draw or, or just fire from it and the chest is really high up the ball and you know what it has a mark five torso because it's a lean chest with a ball joint or a ball actuator i guess with a mm-hmm. high up chest but it everything else about it looks very foreign very strange you know what um hats off to them for doing something different yeah we've been complaining but i'm kind of wish for mercury and i'd be your kid out man mm-hmm. time for bandai to start pulling back and going into that you see yeah start pulling back the, and getting that uc going well, let me get the camera angle hey, right now. Hey man, uh, this is now the time to probably dip into this their side series. They have not gone into Gundam X in a while. They haven't gone into Wing in a while. They haven't gone into a, a whole bunch of other series. That I think a lot of people would like them to return to. We still need a Leo, Master Great Leo. Please don't let the third parties do it first, because my God, I think they will by this rate. <laughs> right, and because at this point, like. I don't know why people they don't if the Targis is built for it if the Targis is already the leo itself i don't know why they haven't gave us a and especially so, if the, <clears throat> if that third party kit is a Targis and if it comes close to looking like a leo before putting all that up there and and you know what it, it coming at it from the american uh american kind of reference right we we, we see this as an obvious thing that they need to do but i think <clears throat> because um in japan uh ibo wasn't as successful in japan and japan's mm. like and, and bandai's main like the people they actually care about so like gets is japanese is japan they, they they actually see us as kind of a secondary market um so if it's going to sell in japan they'll make it there and then we'll just you get the scraps you don't we, think gundam wing will sell uh, uh master great leo will sell in japan? oh no it will definitely sell in japan but i just don't think it will sell as well as a uh, as the Zeta Burkha, for example, right? And and I, I think Bandai, especially with their their loss on the Metaverse video game uh, and several other ventures that they're doing, in my opinion, which were not really the best idea, I think they're only now being cautious and letting out stuff that they know will sell. For example, the Witcher Mercury, that um the prototype Lafriff mm-hmm. in in America, we wanted that kit since day one. All of us have been screaming for it everywhere. In Japan, I don't think it was all that hyped up. So <clears throat> when they released a P Bandai, we got it first. And it was one of the first times ever. I think I've ever seen a P Bandai exclusive hit the US first. before Europe and Asia. That was weird. <laughs> did, they, did they go back and change that though? So <clears throat> they released it, they they dropped the information on it too early and they scrubbed it, but then literally like the next day it was back up and it and was, was just, it, and it was for was it just for US or I thought it was just for, for the US? No, nah, it was just for the US. And, and the, everyone else is going to get it, I think, in two months. Okay. Well, I don't know what other suits. I mean, I guess you could go down uh, X and double X if you. If, but I, I feel like those high grades are recently new, aren't they? Like, not like for the last five years, but they're newer than some of the ones they could, they could go back and touch up more oh, yeah. than on a revive <clears throat> line. I mean, I, I, what the Zaku two, the green one with the kind of like that last one of the revive that they've done. Mm-hmm. So I would like them to. I mean, that might be it, unless they give us a gun tank. Yeah, I can't think of anything else they could give us as a revive. Yeah, there's 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 not a lot because in revive they tend to stick to the most popular suit. So maybe a high grade Dom, maybe get get that a revive, or maybe a high grade Galgoog needs a revive. Yeah, um, a lot of the Xeon suits that were pretty popular back in the day could use especially char uh char piloted suits um I, it, it, what, what was the rick suit diaz. That, um, the rick diaz yep yep the rick diaz uh uh what's, what's the other suit that um 
the the Z the Zagok, the high grade Zagok could definitely mm. use a revive. That one's old, really old. Um, and yeah, there's no there's suits here and there that definitely could use it. Uh, for example, I think that if they did really want to, um, Thunderbolt is coming up on his 20th anniversary, or, or was it 15th anniversary or 10th? 10. Damn, 10. 2015. 10. Yeah, right. Yeah, it should be. It should be his 10th <laughs> anniversary. It should it's, be his 10th anniversary. It's 10th anniversary was going to buy, and I was expecting something. I, I would only expect they would release something new. Uh, <laughs> I think they just really just uh, using that series to keep afloat with the manga. Like, maybe, it's maybe their it's most like successful manga. Yeah. Well, it's just uh, most long running, too. Mm -hmm. To me, so it, obviously it should be successful, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I wonder if it's just like, licenses and stuff like viz viz is like look we need um <laughs> we need something from you or we or we dropping it or we re up and or we changing the price okay well i got a guy he'll he'll punch out gundam stuff for you because apparently, for them, uh, go ahead you know, i'm sorry no go ahead go ahead apparently that's the reason why we never got a masquerade of this or the pale rider is because the licensing of the video game company that they the video game licensing thing would have done weird so if they try to make a masquerade they have to charge a very high price and then have to expect to get a large return which um on a pale rider i feel like at this point it probably won't nah oh no yeah i don't, I don't <laughs> on a pale rider or an exam both the exams the exam I, I don't see a lot of people paying a master grade for this when the high grade is pretty good and i mean i don't know who really wants a master grade now master grade exam three hell yeah i'll I, you got one sale bandai <laughs> you got one guarantee you might got me but i'm just trying to think could they they couldn't if they do that right the mm -hmm. exam exam one and maybe the exam two could be in the same box right yeah maybe, choose, choose. yeah you could as you build an exam three p bandai mm -hmm. they yeah, can do exam that. three or or exam three exam one separate suits but exam two p bandai but you get extra parts okay i'll take that mm -hmm. two master grades though Probably yeah. well, it'd be two master grades regardless yeah they could they could i don't know why a lot of times you get you start thinking like man if we're able to get like full like series and mangas and i was going through and reading through the waves moon gundam there it is mm. moon gundam and i'm like man this is a really good read i think i got all the way up to like chapter 20 um for me with manga it's just hard for me to remember what happened though like i can't remember the names in the books yeah and things like that they're, they're kind of confusing me like tomo and i and you're just like i'm not gonna remember that i just call him t and then no one else in the book calls him t so you forget it eventually <laughs> right <laughs> so yeah and and um and, and for the mangas i mean the the longest running series that they uh that they like to support they they usually kind of just pick them out the blue don't they just for special events or special showcase that they want to bring knowledge to it <laughs> that just sucks, man. Because the Moon Gundam manga, I mean, from what it was translated, it, it was pretty good. You know, it was this like colony that was away from the Earth or away from all other colonies. It's like prim, mm -hmm. like a primate, prim, a primitive, mm -hmm. yeah, a primitive colony. Kid stumbles upon while climbing up something. Was able to see like them um, having the Moon Gundam and stuff like that. Hey, uh, from the from the small bits of animation that we got from UC, I mean, not UC, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gundam Engage. Engage, yeah, yeah, from like that small tale, people were like clamoring, like you are already there, just make it, <laughs> just yeah. fund these guys, and they'll finish it out. But you know, um, and here's here's another thing that I think comes up too is I think Bandai is in a pretty interesting spot where it's trying to balance between us, the builders. Mm -hmm. and mostly our listeners or most of our listeners are builders i'm guessing um and the collectors so you know collectors don't want to build anything they just want to you know be able to collect stuff and, and have an easy probably probably build stuff together like really easily and snap it together and then not paint it not decorate or anything like that just out the box build and then there's people like us who we go the you know the nine miles the full yeah. length for it and ben is stuck in that position of if they're trying to appease us that means this other demographic of their market's not going to get appeased. Uh, not necessarily. 
not necessarily. You, well, I mean, I mean, not not as not as heavily. Like, not like collectors aren't going to buy anything that we buy. I, I just think that you know we're, we would be more likely to buy a the Sananju Stein with the upgraded parts. Right, mm -hmm. that means more to us, in my opinion, than I think at the collectors. What the well, who collectors, do, what do you consider a collector? Um, somebody who buys uh, a Marvin a, a collector. Mm, Marvin's a collector. Yeah, I would consider him a collector. He, he's, he's a builder, but he, he he would. I think he has a lot more boxes that he just doesn't even open. He would so, so as a collector in Gundam, somebody who builds and buys a lot of kits in Gundam, that yeah, could be a collector the Gundam, or a builder. Be, exactly because, because it, but but it depends on what you do with the kits. So like for example, you and I we buy a lot of kits, but we plan on opening it and building it. Um, yeah, I, I think but, collectors, not a lot of them will probably build a lot of kits. A lot of them will have them on the shelf, like as a like manga books. Like have them kind of yeah. stacked as a showcase. I think that's. I think that we're looking at it from an American viewpoint or an, mm -hmm. a non plamo gumpla viewpoint. Mm -hmm. But you're right. I think that if it were mainly figures, that mm -hmm. it would be a lot of people not opening these boxes and keeping them in the boxes if they were figures. Mm -hmm. I think um, the people like at Hobby Town, Wilton, Marvin, Sam. Shout out to those guys. Even Andy. Those mm -hmm. are collectors as mm -hmm. well. Right, like these guys, they have a big backlog and they build everything too. Like I don't think there's a kit that as Marvin hasn't built, mm. right? And it's almost the same for like when I go see Sam and he's in there building. Like those newer people that come in there, they collect and collect and collect, and they also build as mm -hmm. well. So it's not like a, oh, I, it's it's rare for me to come and especially coming from the Funko Marvel Legend game and then moving into this one it's rare for me to find someone say i have this master grade kit and i'm not opening it because it's my favorite kit i'm just going to stack it on my shelf that's a few and far between and i i think that it's it's also kind of goes into the category of the people who not only buy the kits like we do but they buy everything else that Bandai make like i don't think you have a mobile suit gundam wing towel set right or dishware set no right Right, that, that, like those are collectors to me. They buy the dishware set, they buy the acrylic stands, they buy the keychains, mm. they buy all of the jackets, they buy all the patches, they buy you know all this extra stuff that goes along with not just plomo building, right? Mm -hmm. is, is the collectors, and I think Bandai, I think Bandai makes more money probably making a five dollar towel and selling it for fifteen dollars, mm. and they're probably just thinking let's they're appeasing tied to that collector more to us currently because they i don't think they get as much of a return on us um even though our stuff is more expensive it's more costly to make and to bring up their quality that's um, true too i see what you're saying that collector the ones mm -hmm. that that really want like the jackets the shirts the, the wall scrolls stuff mm -hmm. like that yeah oh, i guess you're right there is a difference yeah there is and, a difference and, and and i guess and i guess my next next thing i would bring up then is if if there was this this kind of separation happening now with third party where every well, third parties have a lot more time to just focus on building a model kit one model right. kit yeah yeah one model kit do you think that we'll ever get to a time where bandai is essentially going to be the not not a second place for us but for us plomo kits as as, as builders we'd be looking at third party as essentially the cream of the crop to purchase like what do you eventually have? I don't yeah like what think, even the rarity of it uh I don't think so I, I don't yeah. think so I think our community um gunpla the gunpla community and when I go back and I could be me being small-minded but I go back and think of like the Marvins the Sams the IPMSs like what are those people buying you know mm. yeah yes the third party kits look amazing but Hobby Town sold out of that new Metaverse one hundred dollar mobile suit. You know that uh, red, oh, the dragon? Big red one, the red yeah. dragon thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So oh, I believe. So it. I don't think, and I one two. I think people in this community have a real big gripe with bootlegs, and yeah, mm -hmm. it's like one like we talked about before. Yeah, like, when's it? I'm when's the line drawn? Like. Is this tall geese not a bootleg, or is it? Or is it, since the, it doesn't look like the Bandai version, oh, it's ban, it's P Bandai. I mean, it's um, it's a third party. It's good to go because it doesn't look like the Bandai version. 
Well, the, the bonds, they look exactly like the band. <laughs> they, man, they spent no time on designing oh, yeah. that box. <laughs> they, they, they just got unicorn the fighter. Like, <laughs> God, dog. No time even thinking of a, a better name. On Instagram, unicorn. somebody was building the 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 bootleg high grade wound wart, and it it is it is just the Bandai parts when yeah. you opened it, and the box was literally just like a real grade layout. It is a wound wart. It's an HG, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> they're not even trying <laughs> at this point, and it looks good too. I think that was um uh the homie Kelvin from Volkenstein. Kelvin, oh, okay, Kelvin. yeah, yeah, NATO. NATO over rice. It looked good. Um, oh, yeah, it does right. look it was good. NATO over rice. That's right. It looks Shout good. out to him. Um, really good builder. I, yeah. I think overall, though, third party, well, it, they will have to produce at a massive rate for them to come out and beat Bandai out. Bandai produces and puts out at a massive rate, and they know the people that they're putting out to is going to buy it. Yeah. You know, the, think about how they just, they drop re, recolors and they sell out Bandai. I, I'm, I'm just thinking of like in our, in our small or corner, would it be the cream of the crop to say, hey, I have the PG tall geese, right? All the other Bandai builders and collectors probably won't even bother, but like we would know, like, dang, that's that's the kit. Because, I mean, what the Zapranthes right now is the kit. Everybody wants that kit. And it's, in my opinion, it's kind of hard to find right now. Um, I don't yeah. know whether it's. So you're talking about like the rarity of it? I think the rarity of it would kind of hold a prestige or is that even a good thing to have prestige in kits because i know some no. people don't like it when they show backlogs no i don't think so you don't think so i mean it hmm i mean i've seen some people be upset at showing backlogs before but yeah i think the the um like we talked about before it's like a social currency the mm -hmm. more backlog i have the more um and not necessarily if you have a big backlog but I think if, if, if for some people they get offended when other people flaunt it. You could tell when people are like try like you could tell when people are joking about it. You could tell when people really wanna, you know. It's I, I see it on Facebook more than I see it like on like TikTok or like mm. Instagram or video platforms. I see it more there. The flaunting, because somebody could be like, Oh, hey guys, this is what I just did. Let me know. This could be like on Gundam photography or whatever. Mm. And like I look at the comments because in the toy photography world, people on like Facebook they'll post like the behind the scenes in the comment section, so you you know they don't attach it to the to the main photo. So I'll go through the comments of like the toy of uh, the Gundam photography, and man, how many people will say, "Oh, look at mine! Look at mine! Wait, I got mine! I got mine! Let me show you mine! Let me show you mine!" Like. After a while, it gets to a point where it's like, man, this guy just wants to express himself. Or this person mm -hmm. wants to express himself. And now we're talking about yours. Which is crazy. Mm. So in if um in the Facebook world, I see it more. Hmm. Yeah, and in the, in the I, I guess in the Facebook world, I'm not on Facebook as much. No, nor have I I think Instagram and, and YouTube is pretty much where I've been staying at. But um and I guess it all depends. It all depends. It all depends. It all depends. And that is the let's just chill, just sitting back and talking with Austin. Again, I'm Coop. That's Gunplay Tesseract. And like we talked about earlier, we're going to get into the impact. The Dragon Ball, the impact it had on the community. Uh, like we said earlier in the top of the show, Akira Toriyama, the creator of dragon ball and the dragon ball universe everything you notice about dragon ball t-shirts video games movies macy's day parade all that the man has passed away at 68 years old to a brain hemorrhage mm -hmm. was um put out there reported bleeding in the brain um got so creative Got guy got his, his thoughts were running and wound up taking him out. So yeah, couldn't contain his own imagination. Exactly, man. Yeah. Dragon Ball as a whole, man. I wouldn't be sitting right here. I told a lot of people that when it happened because it hit me up and was asking for my thoughts. I wouldn't be sitting right here if it wasn't for Dragon Ball. I think that was the um, 
true legal gateway drug mm -hmm. right into mm -hmm. anime mm -hmm. was dragon ball with tsunami <laughs> excuse Those me promos the promos the fighting it was just like you said earlier man it brought in a lot of people from different backgrounds the moment you tell somebody who's not into anime that you like anime the first thing they're gonna bring up is, oh you watch dragon ball oh i bang i bang with dragon ball i, I rock with dragon ball i watch dragon ball z I, I, I rock if anything else the dragon ball z was the middle ground between a lot of people mm -hmm. from different cultures and different backgrounds and especially when the anime scene started to take off 2010s 2012s 09 and stuff like that mm -hmm. when you start seeing like athletes i remember seeing was it marcus goodwin marquise goodwin the receiver he oh yeah like yeah the football cleats that had like the kamehameha on it and more like juju smith schuster started getting like um somebody had the goku visor playing football mm -hmm. and i think that's when it started being a lot more embraced once the like the sports athletes started taking off with the anime so dragon ball as a whole i think a lot of people will not be here man a lot of people would not be here if it wasn't over for akira toriyama i mean this uh, saying he's a staple in the industry is almost not even doing it justice i mean it, in every generation there's like something so huge that it affects everyone around it and everybody just has this whole new ideas and thoughts brought over by this sometimes media sometimes a, you know certain type of media sometimes books sometimes a movie uh for example my for my father's life um in his er stage of growing up it was star wars and star trek right and mm -hmm. what's, what's crazy is to say for my life and generation it was mobile suit gundam and dragon ball z uh and, and then what bleach naruto followed afterward and when mm -hmm. that in right is that staple when star wars happened you saw sci-fi dramas and interesting stuff start to spike up and for us once dragon ball z tsunami happened we started saw anime spike up so and, and, and toriyama with his immense imagination crazy worlds and not just dragon ball what he made a uh what sandland which is a mm -hmm. new anime that's coming out this season that which was based Go ahead. Which I heard Sandland, we was talking about it at Hobby Town. The reason why was was told to me, like this could be wrong, but what was told to me, did you know the reason why he made Sandland? Mm -mm. Uh, the guy told me at Hobby Town, Sandland was created because Akira Toriyama wanted just to draw that tank and said, you know what? Oh. Now I got to put a story behind the tank. And because it, it's a one shot, it's a one shot book. And then it went into now it's an anime so he nice. just wanted to draw that tank that was, that's coming out <laughs> and it wound up being that now it's a whole series that's how talented this guy is <laughs> this dude wanted to draw a tank <laughs> ended up making a series bro that's so, wild it's wild so akira Toriyama, i mean it, it's staple in the industry and i mean when oda even stopped by so just to be like i remember i remember everything about this guy everything that he's taught me everything that he's helped me with every every day was a blessing that he was here and mm -hmm. now that he's gone I, I mean i feel like i feel like the anime industry this is our first heavy heavy loss oh yeah like this this is the first heavy heavy hitter for our generation that we've lost i told um, um my girl that what this is up could be up there with michael jackson yeah it could be up there with michael jackson like she's like no way then cnn reported it yeah she was like oh then wavy 10 which is our local way uh, news channel reported it then stephen a from first take gives his condolences it's it's huge it's huge dude this dude was the this dude was it this dude was the legend man this this dude was it and i mean uh, i can only imagine i can only imagine what how now what happens next because i mean i i don't know it, it i i feel like i feel like there's still so much creativity and 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 great things coming out of the manga and anime industry especially new ideas all the mm -hmm. time 
right? But him not being there just sometimes, I don't know, it feels like it puts everything in perspective, right? Uh, how much time we got left. Yeah, enjoy and, it. And enjoy it. And how many how many new, fresh ideas are... Mm. Yeah, mm. because I watched a um, video which it broke down that Akira Toriyama was comfortable and happy with the ending of Dragon Ball Z. He ended it. It was great. Then he got extremely upset and mad once he watched the live action Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> and that's what brought about Super. I believe and, it. So he watched the movie it. and got mad and upset about the movie. And it was like documented. He was extremely angry with the movie. I believe it. Turn makes, around and made Super. Makes then, complete sense. <laughs> Man, so imagine if we didn't have the Dragon Ball Evolution movie. Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> oh, Lord. If we didn't have a movie that, that's terrible. Now we have, what is it? They're doing it for everything now. Avatar Last Airbender had the yeah. M. Night Shyamalan movie. Now we got the <laughs> live action Netflix just to fix that. But, right. I mean, yeah. I mean, dude, it, it, and you know all of his work now is skyrocketing in price. I know all of his original prints and the original Shonen magazines. That drop mm -hmm. for the original GB right now is skyrocketing price, which just goes to show you that the, he's going to be around. I mean, even though he's not here anymore, his oh, name yeah. is going to be around forever. It's just like how, like the first, when I first heard when he passed, first thing I thought of was the Sandlot scene when Babe Ruth told um, Benny the Jet and Sandlot, like, heroes I remember, but legends never die. Mm -hmm. And that was, and that's every single time. That guy's, he's going to live, he's Tupac of anime. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, um, like he's just never gonna when you talk about anime dragon ball z is gonna be there dragon ball is gonna be there forever like this isn't no guy that we're gonna be like oh yeah 1500s oh yeah that show um no it's all you always gonna remember dragon ball dragon ball z dragon ball super whatever dragon ball kai dragon ball video game whatever you're gonna remember it Hell, his art style. What? His art style alone, man. And and what Dragon Quest? He was the guy who did Dragon yeah. Quest characters, it's, for God's sake. And, and shoot, it's it's crazy the impact of mm -hmm. what we had as a child. I didn't know how big it was in the Hispanic community. Do you oh. know how big? Do you know how big? No, I didn't know that. Dog, Colombia had several funerals. Really? For uh, for him. Oh, that would make... several funerals it's, uh, I think El Salvador mm -hmm. made it a day of mourn mm. the country wow. made it the day of mourn that would make sense I remember actually in South America I'm only remembering this now is that uh, a lot of Japanese media and electronics gets shipped over to South America because it's one of the few places they can import to and it, they still have the. I think the PlayStation 2 they had a video game came out for the PlayStation 2 just 5 years ago or 6 years ago the PlayStation wow. 2 is still like prevalent over there. So I, I mean that doesn't shock me that they're now Dragon Ball Z is, is big over there now too. And anime, but I mean, dude, a day of mourning for a whole country. Why well, I would imagine I would imagine Japan right now is probably just shooken up because yeah, you know, the legend is gone. It's Macy Day Parade. They got mm -hmm. Goku flying in the American Macy Day Parade. Day parade. The parade, my mom says, let's sit down and watch after the end of every Thanksgiving, the Macy Day Parade. They you had to go the standards. What is it? Uh, Snoopy? Snoopy. Uh, I think one time they had Barney. Like Barney, the art. Oh, yeah, all of it. And then I and think then now they got Goku. One Piece. And then one Goku piece. now. So anime is becoming prevalent. And I got a um, question I'm going to put out there for you. Um, and I will ask CD when he comes back to it and everybody out there as well. And um, Spotify and YouTube land. Hmm. I hope it's not a hard question. <laughs> it's no. not, not a panel question. I don't know the ant manga that well. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. The big three of tsunami. We know the big three Ooh. of anime. What's the big three of tsunami? Dragon Ball Z, Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, and oh damn, I don't know who's in that last spot. Uh, are we talking about early day tsunami or late day tsunami? In general. In general. Hmm. You know, Naruto was on tsunami, but I don't really consider Naruto and tsunami kind of. Yeah, mixing, Dang. right? Yeah, I, and and maybe that's because I was an early, I was early on tsunami when it first started. So my OG series are like Big O, um, 
Uh, mm-hmm. Taro like, reboot was reboot. Reboot. Remember reboot was on one four kids. I think was that on tsunami? Was that four kids? I think that was tsunami. Mm. I remember the, the CG was yeah. oh, bro. We CG was terrible, we, yeah. but it was exciting to watch though. Bro, Man, it, was it was great exciting to watch reboot. But, oh boy, have you seen? <laughs> we we come a long way. We came a long way. <laughs> if people uh, that's out there listening, uh, look up reboot '90s show. It's Skeeter from Doug, but in CG. Ugh, it's mm. uh, uh, get your glasses ready <laughs> and keep away from the sharp ends. You might poke out an eye, right? <laughs> but no, well, man. Um, Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. Uh, I'm, uh, that's Dragon that's Ball gonna Z. be in everybody's top, right? This that's good. The yeah. Gundam Wing. You might even have to move it to five because I mean the top three is those two spots are definite. I don't think anyone's shaking those two spots. Dragon Ball, and that left is what Tenchi Muyo. Tenchi Muyo, um, that would Roni be Kenshin, Roni Kenshin. Um, was, was Kenshin on? Uh, Roni Kenshin. Oh, Roni Kenshin might have been mid mid tsunami. I don't Sailor think it was Moon. Old. Sailor, Sailor Moon. Moon. Sailor Moon was mid tsunami because that that was on four kids TV on the um, mm-hmm. regular access channels before tsunami was. I'm trying. Um, to, I remember kids. Midnight Run. Midnight Run on tsunami was Dragon Ball Z and Gundam Wing. Dragon Ball Z and Gundam Wing. Well, Dragon Ball Z and Gundam Wing did start Wednesdays at 4 30 as well, 4 30 and mm-hmm. 5 30, respectively. Oh, look at that. Because I remember um coming home from school and that was the first thing I could watch. Mm-hmm. Um let's see. Uh kind of man, that's that's a toughie. Uh let's see, we got Big O. Um we see Sailor Moon, Big O, uh Roroni Kenshin, Naruto, Bleach, um, uh, oh God! I, I know, I know. People listening to us right now is screaming at the top of their lungs. <laughs> the third one, that every, like, no, no, God dang it! It was, it was a, uh, it was big O for Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ, or or, or uh, another show. So we um, got a, a list of tsunami animes. Did Cowboy Bebop air on tsunami, or is that Midnight Run? That was Adult Swim. That was Cow- Adult Swim. No, Cowboy Bebop did run. Did, Cowboy did. Bebop and Outlaw Star. Outlaw Star, God, dang, hey, people! Outlaw Star, people. If you want a fantastic, a shockingly good, like series take on what modern day heroes journey, Star Wars, intergalactic space opera, done right, Outlaw Star is, who it is up there. Um, it's shocking that they never, they never did a revive of that. You would, yeah. I would believe they would do a revive of like it, a Netflix or something, right? Something. Be, Trigun, Trigun's getting got a got a, a remake that's actually pretty good. If you get over the CG, it's actually pretty good. Um, but uh, dude, I I don't know, man. Dragon Ball Z and Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. Those are my twos. Those are the twos I hit every day when I got home from school. Every single day, just today. I, <laughs> here, here, listening, to Peter Cullen. He was, yeah. Yo, the, to the stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suit up. <laughs> but it is a decent run. Robotech. Mm-hmm. See, Sailor Dragon Moon. Ball. Robotech. Robotech, Sailor Moon. The SD Gundam is when I started falling out of SD Gundam Force. It's when I started falling out of Toonami. Well, that was heavily Americanized, apparently, too. Like, there was actually a more, like, mature story. That um the colonization uh, Americanized kind of took away from it to make it air on TV. You Haka show. Ooh. You, you Haka show. That might be the three. I don't know, it's, man. You, I didn't watch a lot of you Haka show. Sailor Moon. It's either gonna be Sailor Moon, you you Haka show, or, or Cowboy Bebop. I don't know. Inuasha. And ooh. Inuasha. Um dang, bro, dude. Full Metal Alchemist when it was first airing. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, Dick, you know what? This, this, we would have to sit down and look at this whole list and and separate up in se- separate categories for because for me, there's early tsunami, mid tsunami, late tsunami. Dragon Ball Z was the prevalent force in every single phase of that show. Even now, when tsunami still runs at midnight, it's still Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, even though we've all seen it, <laughs> watching right. him turn Super Saiyan to beat Freeze's ass into the dirt, <laughs> and the midnight one was uncut. Yeah, the that's the like that's the first time I saw like blood, mm-hmm. like um, excuse me, I was coughing, but when Krillin got stabbed right here by Freezer, 
He's mm-hmm. like shaking them around, like blood's just dripping on free. I'm like, God, Dude, this is uh, rated R. <laughs> That's yeah. what, I remember saying that as a kid. Like this, this is rated Dragon, R. Dragon Ball GT is the first time I've heard an animated character flip the bird and curse at the same time. Oh, that, that that one guy in the like opening episode who flips off Pan. Yeah, he says, mm-hmm. "Do you know what this means?" And she's like, "Yeah, douche." <laughs> <laughs> but. That just tells you the impact, especially here in the States and everywhere, everywhere. So let us know, people, down in the comments below. What is your favorite moment in Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, whatever the case? Okay. What is your favorite Akira Toriyama? That's what we want to know in the comments. Hmm. Yeah. And, and you know, it, you know, also tell a, tell a nice story of when, when you first got into Dragon Ball or when you first watched any of Kira Toriyama's works or maybe took notice of it. Maybe you were just watching TV and saw a favorite athlete do the do the fusion dance or maybe a, an actor was wearing the, uh, what is it, the um, the sage icon or the, um, the icon of Goku, the gi yeah. of Goku, which I've seen a lot more celebrities, athletes, a lot of people wear those gis. I've seen them yeah. now a lot. And I was like, oh, wow, that, dang, everybody, literally everybody. So let us know in the comments. Absolutely. Absolutely. Shout out to Vulcan Hobby. We got use the code undergate 10. You get 10% off your items at VulcanHobby.com. We try to save y'all a little bit because we know how tight it is. We try to be real with y'all. I just brought this master grade off of someone for 20 (laughs) 20 bucks. Let's see. I'm trying to think. My last few master grades. From two, two from you, yeah. Mm-hmm. So pretty cheap. So I'm not buying Master Grades full price anymore. Yeah. Hey, you got one for me for free. <laughs> At that, yeah. <laughs> Go to SMS use and uh, use code Chloe's Dad to get ten percent off your items if you shop directly with SMS. Great paint to use. Great for beginners. Great for beginners, Austin. SMS. <laughs> I have some SMS. Yeah, I've been using it. it's, it's fantastic. It is fantastic. He does. Pre-thinned, pre-thinned is a godsend. <laughs> <laughs> learn it. Sometimes you gotta learn it the hard way. Sometimes the test comes before the lesson. It's oh, okay. I, I rather I rather have the results, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and use my code Coop10 if you shop directly with Gun Primer. Um, Gun Primer has some great tools. I'm using them almost every day now. I got some reviews coming on them. Some things I don't like and some things I love. So make sure y'all check it out. And don't forget, shout out to Chloe's dad, who's not here tonight, but he'll be back next week. Gunpla Tesseract and my, me, uh, my blah, 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 myself, <laughs> me, myself, and I. And there we it's go. Coop on Instagram. Be kind. Be respectful. Be all of the above. Cherish the time you have. Uh, absolutely. Cherish the time you have. And speaking of time, we see y'all in 168 hours. It's down to getting never underrated. Until next time, people. Peace. <laughs>